So today, in honor of Oktoberfest, we are going to be making a bratwurst sausage, but it's all vegan and all raw. The ingredients are very simple. Almonds, walnut, and sunflower seeds. So, so I'm gonna start with the almonds. I push it through. The carrot gives it the creamy consistency. A handful of sun seeds. The purple bee is just purely for color. Now I have all this lovely stuff in a bowl. Tell me, all in the here. Just a little drizzle of olive oil. Kleine bisschen von aminos oder soy sauce. And a half a teaspoon of fennel seed. See how that's the color of poor ground beef. Now we are going to add the cream. Okay. Stir that up. And now it looks just like sausage insides. <laughs> it is so good. The last phase of this recipe is, uh, this is a rice paper wrapper. You get them at any Asian market. Just gonna cut it like that and put it in hot water. And you wanna put it on a plate so it doesn't stick, not a cutting board. <laughs> it's a sausage. And now we're gonna finish it off and really make it look like sausage. I'm gonna put a sauce on it. Uh, it's about a tablespoon of namashoyu or tamari. Ein Esslöffel von soy sauce. And then a half a teaspoon of paprika. A halber Löffel paprika. And a half a teaspoon of chipotle. So just give it a quick little mixer up there. And then I'm gonna brush it on my sausage. You could either put this in the dehydrator for a couple hours or just eat it. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Sieht aus wie Fleisch. Okay, Hans. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Mm. This, is, this is good sausage. Mmm. Sehr gesund. Erstaunlich, wie das schmeckt. This is, this is so good. Hans, gets the flammenwerfer. Okay, we only have three ingredients to make this whipped cream. We need a can of chickpea juice. The strainer was a little bit overkill. I thought they were all going to fall into it, but they didn't. <laughs> just one lone garbanzo bean skin there. So we're straining it just in case. This gives us about three quarters of a cup of aquafaba. And then we're going to just dump all of our bean juice right into our stand mixer here with a whisk attachment. You can definitely use a hand mixer as well, whatever you've got. It'll do. And we're going to start whisking on low speed and work our way up to medium speed until our juice is nice and frothy, like so. And once we've got a good little foam happening, I'm going to add in a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. The cream of tartar is gonna help us stabilize our mixture here so we can form some really nice, solid whipped cream-like peaks out of our aquafaba. So I'm just gonna start whipping it again on high speed for a couple more minutes. And then I'm going to slowly add in some of this Swerve granulated monk fruit sweetener. So now we're just whipping it, and whipping it real good. I'm adding in a teaspoon of vanilla extract so we can get a little bit more of a whipped cream-like flavor. Look how pillowy soft this whipped cream looks. It's amazing. You can enjoy this whipped cream in so many different ways. It's only three calories per serving, 36 calories for this entire bowl, <laughs> in case you want to uh, just go for it. But I love adding it to strawberries, but use your imagination. The possibilities are endless with this whipped cream. You can use it with just about anything even if that is just a spoon and yourself and some good old Netflix. <laughs> and today is gonna be awesome because I am cooking with banana peels. Cut both the top and the bottom off. Now that I have all these peeled bananas, I'm actually just gonna put these in the freezer to freeze them for smoothie bowls and banana and ice cream, stuff like that. And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is to clean the banana peel as I have heard it described. Uh, but basically just scrape all of the sort of white pulp off of it. So I guess you wanna just be left with the peel like that. Uh, you just take a fork and you just kinda go down it like this. And it's supposed to just shred it. Let's see how this works. 
I'm shredding up my cutting board too, apparently. <laughs> so it does kind of work. I wonder if I could do it like this. Ah, that's the technique. Cool. Cut that off. All right, and I guess this is what we're trying to get. So I'm gonna shred the rest of these and then we'll move on to the next step. That was kind of time consuming, I'm not gonna lie. It took about 10 minutes to do all that. So the recipe calls for like a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. And a teaspoon of smoked paprika, three quarters of a teaspoon of chili spice, three quarters of a teaspoon of garlic powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter of a teaspoon of cumin. And now you just wanna mix this up really well. Okay, it's starting to become a little bit more appetizing to me. It wasn't even looking like food there for a minute, but it's starting to smell good. So the recipe did say that you do want to do a little bit of a water saute. This is going to help to steam it a little bit, cook it down. So definitely want to add a few splashes of water while you're cooking. So apparently it takes about five to 10 minutes to cook. Not very long at all. And uh, the greener or less ripe the banana is, the longer it's going to take to cook and tenderize. And uh, now you're gonna want to add the barbecue sauce. This is definitely gonna be where a lot of the magic happens. So it calls for two tablespoons of barbecue sauce. But... So once the sauce is all mixed in and is heated up and everything, um, yeah, this is pretty much done cooking if you know what I mean. Uh, so I was able to find these nice big buns. I think this is gonna be perfect for these sandwiches. They're vegan friendly, whole wheat. They actually call them peasant buns, which is like so funny. <laughs> it definitely looks the part. So let's build these sandwiches, see how it tastes. Okay, so let's try it out. Look how good it looks. I'm gonna give you guys a close up first. Like, definitely looks pretty good. All right, ready? Yeah. Oh, wow. It tastes good. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm. Wow. Mmm. Okay. As per usual, we're gonna start off with wrap pizza crust. So easy and convenient and all raw. And I made this cashew cheese earlier. I'll link a video, it's really simple. Just pre-soaked cashews, garlic powder, sea salt, lemon juice, a little water. And this time I added an entire zucchini. Then I used blue magic, blue spirulina powder. This stuff is so beautiful. And then uh, equally as beautiful is this beet powder that I've had for way too long. But I started off with the beet powder just to get it a beautiful pink color. And then I'm going to add the blue spirulina powder. Um, and again, don't measure it. Um, I just put it in and then stir it up and then it turns purple. And then I put it on my pizza crust. And then you can put any toppings you want. I hope this inspired you and obviously you can, um, you know, use this for other things, you know, dip veggies in it. Um, just the idea of creating this purple cashew cheese, um, it can be applied to different things. Put it in wraps, dip your veggies in it. It's a lot of fun. I love the color contrast and the texture that it imparts and you can also add things like spring onions or even zucchini or um, bell pepper like whatever you want if you have some leftovers you want to get through and then i thought i'd um, put a little contrast by adding some black sesame seeds it also changes the texture just ever so slightly and i had some leftover spring onions that i'd cut up earlier for a different recipe so i decided that that would be my other topping i didn't want to bombard this too much because i wanted to be able to still see the blue so I didn't go too crazy with the toppings um, but I did add a little bit of sesame oil after and it was divine so I highly recommend you try this I, you know you eat with your eyes first guys and this is a feast for the senses in every way hey hi today we're gonna make 
Veggie prosciutto. Veggie prosciutto. Veggie prosciutto for you though. Let's do it, what's this? This is rice paper, what's typically used for spring rolls. So rice paper prosciutto is gonna be layery, really kind of savory, stretchy, and really yummy. What you're gonna need for this recipe is a can of beets, nutritional yeast, beets. olive oil, tamari, olive oil, bouillon, bouillon, and vegan Worcester sauce. So we're gonna set aside the rice paper. We need to open up these cans of beets. Half a cup of olive oil. Let's put it somewhere level to make sure that I did it correctly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Lastly, we need a half a cup of tamari. Now what we're going to do is take each sheet of rice paper and individually set it into the marinade. Whoa. There we go. That's really cute. Okay, so at this point, it should look something like this. Wow. Cool. It's gotta absorb for a absorb. few minutes. Wow. Oh my. Look at that veggie rice paper prosciutto. Show it to the people. Look, people. Look, people. Human beings, witness this. Look! It's done. Ooh. So this should be the texture. You want it like still flexible, but crispy around the edges and firm. And then one of the best parts about this is when you separate the layers. Let's taste it now. Oh my, that is so good. I love the chew. Mm. Mm. Really satisfying. What is TVP? That's the most common question whenever we use it here on the channel. You may have seen it in our previous recipes such as our very loved vegan nuggets, chorizo, and chili. But yeah, the possibilities for TVP are endless, so let's talk about it. TVP's generic name is Total Soy Protein or TSP, which actually makes more sense because it contains a derivative of soybeans rather than actual vegetables. But go figure. TVP is a factory processed food product that is nearly impossible to make on your own because you need heavy machinery in order to isolate or separate the soy protein from other components found in the whole soybean. The defatted soy protein is then compressed into granules or chunks and usually dried and then rehydrated before cooking. The most common TVP found in stores is textured vegetable protein flakes, but they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. A few more popular items are the soy curls and the soy chunks, which could be used in stir fries, stews, made into nuggets, and that's just to name a few. Also, if you think you've never had textured vegetable protein before, think again. TVP is commonly found in beef hamburgers as meat extenders, which is basically what we think of as fillers. Except in the food industry, fillers are considered to be high in carbohydrates, whereas TVP is high in protein. And the TVP is commonly found in meatballs and sausages, amongst other things, in the food industry in order to bulk up the food's weight and keep prices down. So it's highly likely that you've had it before and you just didn't realize it because it's so good at disguising itself as meat. Therefore, the perfect meat alternative. And at this point, I know you might be wondering, well, is it safe rose? And that really just depends on where you stand, whether you are pro-soy or anti-soy, but at the end of the day, it is a very processed food, so either way, you want to eat it in moderation. TVP, or textured vegetable protein, has become an important source of protein for vegetarians and vegans. It is also used in sausage and other meat products as a moisture retainer as well as in powdered form in many breads. TVP comes in a granular form like this as well as in chunks and in a fine powder. Today we're going to make TVP vegetarian burger patties. To start, combine the tomato sauce, marmite or vegemite, garlic granules, chili flakes, salt and light soy sauce with the vegetable stock. Pour the mixture into the TVP, stir to combine, cover the mixing bowl and allow this to stand for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, all of the liquid will have been completely absorbed by the TVP. Start adding the flour bit by bit, stirring it in thoroughly after each addition. Once all of the flour is added, you'll notice that the TVP is quite sticky, 
and looks and behaves almost like real minced meat. Use your burger press to press out the patties a half inch thick by four inches in diameter. Drop the patties onto squares of foil or baking parchment and transfer them to a platter. Cover the platter with cling wrap and transfer this to your freezer. Once the patties are totally frozen, you can fry them over medium heat in a little butter for 4 to 5 minutes per side and they are nicely browned. Transfer the fried patties to buns and serve immediately.